Ever wondered how a weapon weighing more than three AKs could shoot up to one mile and revolutionize warfare? Enter the Lewis machine gun. Discover the ingenious designs from a gas chamber valve to a unique disc magazine that set this gun apart. Dive into the unexpected quirks like its forced air cooling jacket. Join us to explore why the Lewis is not just another gun but a legendary piece of history waiting to be unveiled. Don't miss this incredible journey, your ticket to gun enthusiast Nirvana. Imagine a time when the Lewis System machine gun, a quirky British handheld machine gun from World War I, decided to take center stage. This little guy was one of the earliest handheld machine guns that said adios to those clunky stationary ones that just couldn't keep up with the cool troops on the move. So here's the scoop. Samuel McLean had this bright idea, but Colonel Isaac Lewis of the American Army took it under its wing and gave it some serious pizzazz. At first, he dreamt of creating a water-cooled stationary machine gun, but guess what? Maxim and Browning had already snagged that spot, so he chucked that idea out the window. By the way, there's a nifty video about Maxim in the top right corner, just in case you're curious. In the year 1913, Isaac paraded his invention in front of the US military, a handheld machine gun with fancy forced air cooling. But oh, what a bummer. No one at the party seemed interested in his cool invention. So Lewis decided to pack his bags and jet off to Belgium, where he started his own swanky company, Arms Automatic Lewis in Liege. But wait, there's more. To tackle the challenges in making this weapon, Isaac hopped over to the United Kingdom and joined with the Birmingham Small Arms BSA company. It was a match made in gun heaven. In the same year, the Belgian army went, hey, Lewis, you are our guy, and adopted those snazzy Lewis guns. By 1914, they were rocking it at the start of World War I. Now hold on to your hat because in July 1913, the first batch of 10 of these bad boys landed in Russia for a test spin at the officer's infantry school. They were a hit. Compared to those clunky old machines, these Lewis guns were like the cool kids at the party. They even got an invite to arm airplanes with their lightweight awesomeness. Just two years later, the British government said, sure Russia, you can have some of our Lewis guns. They shipped over about 9,500 American-made Lewis guns with Mosin rifle ammunition and around 1,900 British models in the 303 British caliber, all before the revolution party started. By the late 1930s, they had a little vacation from service, but when World War II kicked off, they made a comeback. A bit of a makeover happened. They ditched the radiators and traded two bipods for a sleek telescopic one. The Lewis machine gun was back in action, ready to party. Now picture this. The Lewis machine gun was a superstar and it owed its fame to a dynamic duo of awesomeness. First, its combat skills were off the charts. Imagine this heavy dude weighing in at a whopping 11.8 kilograms, blasting bullets up to 1,800 meters away at a rate of 550 rounds per minute. That's like a rock concert for bullets. Secondly, in the world of machine guns, it was like the Lewis show was the only one in town. You had the German MG 0815, which was basically a Maxim on a diet, still bulky but trying to slim down. The French Schauscha? Oh boy, that one had commitment issues. It was unreliable and hated getting dirty. And then there was the Danish Madsen. For sure, it had a few moments of glory, but it was like the machine gun equivalent of a one-hit wonder in the music world couldn't evolve for the life of it. But our guy Lewis knew how to party. He squeezed every drop of potential out of his invention. His machine gun was like the Swiss Army knife of bullets, firing everything from the 303 British 7.69 by 57 mm to Mosin rifle cartridges 7.62 by 54 mm to 3006 Springfield 7.62 by 53 mm and even the exotic sounding 256 man liquor 6.5 by 53 mm. Oh, and let's not forget the German 8 mm cartridge. He was multilingual in the world of bullets. You've heard of the Mosin rifle, right? It's got that boom factor despite only firing 10 rounds per minute. It could smack the enemy at a distance of 1,300 meters. 
But hold on to your helmets because Lewis's machine gun firing the same caliber might have a slightly lower bullet start and an effective range of around 800 meters, still not too shabby. But guess what? It could spit out 55 times more bullets per minute. It's like the muzzin on caffeine and steroids, and it's ready to party hard. But wait, there's more. Even though Lewis is a bit of a vintage champ, it's not too far behind our modern Kalashnikov machine gun. Sure, it might lose a foot trace in the effective shooting range by 200 meters, but in everything else, from bullet speed to rate of fire, it's like they're dancing to the same bullet beat. Now picture this. Lewis, our rock star of a machine gun world, might have danced to the same beat as its gas-operated pals, but it had a couple of party tricks up its sleeve. First off, there's this special valve on the gas chamber. Think of it as the DJ of the gun world, regulating the rate of fire and keeping the tempo just right. Then we've got the magazine, not your everyday magazine, mind you. It's like a multi-layered disc of bullet goodness holding a groove-worthy 47 or 97 rounds. And here's the kicker, this magazine doesn't need a spring to rock and roll. Nope, it's got this cool lever-type feeding mechanism that swings into action, thanks to the tail of the bolt. It's like the gun's very own mechanical dance move. Now let's talk about the cool factor. There's this distinctive looking shroud, it's like the machine gun's stylish jacket. But it's not just for looks, it's all about forced air cooling. When this bad boy fires, the powder gases get all trapped in the shroud and they're like, let's get this party started. They force cold air to groove along the barrel, thanks to some magic with pressure and temperature. It's the gun's way of staying chill when things heat up. But here's a fun twist. The aviation version of this gun skipped the cool jacket. Surprisingly, it didn't miss a beat and partied just fine without it. So, you could say the shroud was like bringing a fancy hat to a casual beach party. A bit of an extravagance. Now let's hit the virtual dance floor. Imagine Lewis in two video games. Battlefield 1, BF1 and Lewis in Battlefield Hardline. When it comes to shooting accuracy, these games are like night and day. Seriously, it's like comparing a smooth jazz session to a punk rock concert. None of them quite matches the real world Lewis, but it's all in good fun. And we can't forget about the damage. In real life, one shot at medium range would do the trick. But in BF1, you'll need a precise seven shots to take someone down. In Hardline, it's a bit better. Five shots should do it, but it's still far from reality. So if we're talking about character traits, the Lewis in Hardline is the sharpshooter, accurate, powerful, and a bit of a tough cookie. It's not a fan of wild hip firing. It prefers a more refined, aimed approach. But the Lewis in BF1? Well, it's the life of the gaming party. A true all-rounder that perfectly matches its real-world counterpart. It's like the Lewis you'd want as your wingman on the virtual battlefield.